Welcome along to a new series that we're trying to film. Um, so the purpose of this series is to showcase a bunch of real remote huts and bibs that don't get seen very often. So here in New Zealand we've got a wealth of public land, we're bloody lucky, and scattered across that public land is a massive network of sort of huts and bibs. Some of these huts see a lot of traffic, they're in sort of heavily hunted areas or they've got good tramping opportunities or rafting or climbing. Uh, but there's some bibs and huts that really don't see many people. Um, so that's the point of this series, is to go to those bibs that, that might only see seven or eight people a year um, and give you a bit of a route guide on how to get here. Hey guys, welcome back to uh, episode four of our Backcountry Bibs series. Uh, pretty excited on this one. It's been a while since we've been out for a proper trip, so got the hundred liters absolutely packed. Uh, we're going to be heading up to the tops for a few days. Uh, target is Fife and Biv, way up on the top here. So um, yeah, we're just currently crossing the Morrison footbridge uh, over the Oterra. I'm going to go up Paratu Stream, up to the saddle, and yeah, make our way along the tops. Uh, Weather's actually looking mint for once. We've got our snow gear. Um, actually doesn't look like there's too much snow up there, which is quite good. So hopefully we're gonna do a bit of a loop trip. Um, there's some pretty epic hopples at the other side, but yeah, we'll try a bit more about them when we get there. But yeah, other than that, absolutely fizzing. Boys are off, let's do it. Oh well, just made it up to Waharoa Saddle now. Um, pretty neat views from up here. So it's taken us about three and a half hours to get up um, the two stream behind you there. And there's a couple points to note. Um, firstly, we bash through the bush. I uh, recommend just going straight along the flood route uh, to the Tower Macau and then just come up two stream right from the start. Uh, save you a bit of time. And then at about the 540 contour mark, you want to take the true left fork. It's pretty obvious they've got a big old triangle there um, rather than the true right. And then I think it's about the 800 metre contour, a bit closer up. Um, it sort of veers off from the main watercourse and you go up like a wee side stream and follow that all the way up to the saddle here. But now the views are mint. Um, it's about four o'clock now, so we don't think we're going to make it to the bib. We're just going to push up to the tops and camp up by a tarn up there. So, ah, it's mint. Good old climb. <laughs> Feeling it. <laughs> two steps past the camera. <sighs> It's just so snowy and super exposed from the southerly that's actually ripping over the top there a bit. But this here is, I don't know if you've got to see it, a horrific, horrific campsite that I might just have to do.
your footing. There's no fucking way that's ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking the first. <laughs> Buddy, what the fuck? Oh, what are we looking at? Let's go. <laughs> oh, fucking no. That's not bad at all. Right, boys are working up to a beautiful crisp morning. Um, a bit cold overnight, eh, Mitch? It's freezing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> boys are really warm up now. Um, we're just going to climb up this hill and have a quick look at the kind of head basin in front of us and see what's around. Um, yeah, might go after something, otherwise we'll just come back, pick up camp, and then carry on. Well, no luck on the morning hunt. Fife Biv is in that sort of second basin you can see over there. Um, so to get there, you've got this band of bluffs in the way, so from what we've read, you've got to go up this ridge, up over the bluffs, and then drop down into that first basin and sidle around. So yeah, hopefully there's not too much snow um, on that down slope. So I'm a bit nervous about it, but it should be right. Well, got the ice gear out. She's um pretty snowy up there and there's a couple patches on that last ridge are a little bit icy, so carried it all this way, might as well put the bloody crampons on and yeah, see how we go. <laughs> no sliding eh buddy? No sliding. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Might be a little bit overkill, but oh, rather safe than sorry. Exactly. Buddy, there's only one, but we can share, what? right? Turn around to you. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> fucking way. I've got some incredible news for you. That's just it. And it's got a shutter. Oh, how good! <laughs> Holy! <laughs> that one ready to go. Suck. It does look cold. <laughs> Thank you. 
Otherwise, boys had a bit of a restful couple of hours, and uh, now we're at for an evening hunt. Uh, unfortunately, the forecast of weather has come in. Um, but yeah, we're going to go pop up over this ridge over here and hopefully look down to the bush line. Um, yeah, we've seen a few animal tracks up high, but we're thinking most of them might be, a bit, uh, be down a wee bit lower. So yeah. Well, we tried waiting out the clag, but she's she's pretty persistent. So um, now we're going to call it a night here. Um, we're a bit gutted, eh? Like, we sort of thought this was going to be our best hunting opportunity. We're in like, the spot we wanted to be and uh, expected to really find a chamois. So I'm pretty gutted, but it's kind of been the theme of all the backcountry bib episodes. It's either clagged in or just been barking down with rain. So um, it's all right. It's the way it goes sometimes. So we head back to bib, have a wee cook up, and then probably have another stab at it tomorrow morning if this clag's lifted, and then probably drop off the top. So you can play, mate. <clears throat> Not to be tonight. spot anything. Um, we've seen absolutely no sign up on the tops. We haven't really sort of set off after chamois like on their own before so usually it's a byproduct of other animals that we're hunting. But yeah we don't really know what they do in August. Um, I don't think they'll be up on the tops. They're either up in the clag above us in the bluffs but we've seen no sign so they're probably down lower in the scrub or something because you know, we've heard there's animals up here and read about in the hut books so I don't know. <laughs> Just Nothing on our front anyway. Um, so yeah, gonna go pack up and head down a different route than the one that we came up. So down here is Pfeiffer Creek. There's a way you can get into it. And you can follow it all the way down now, down the bottom. And then you can follow sort of the Taramakau back out to Aikens Corner. So a little bit easier than going back up over the top uh, where we came and just a different route that seems a bit more direct. Yeah, so this is Fife Bib. Uh, bloody neat wee spot and just a cool bib. It's the biggest bit of a bang too, super comfortable. Um, yeah, and a bit of a journey to get here already. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, probably took us about eight hours, I'd say, mm. roughly. Um, we did fluff around quite a lot, you know, hunting along the way and stuff like that. Um, on the Remote Huts website, it says you get here about four to six hours. And I think in summertime, without the snow and the light pack, you'd definitely get here in six hours. Um, so you're perfect for a weekend trip. Uh, surprisingly, it gets quite a few visitors. We didn't really think it'd be this many, but yeah, around summertime, definitely bring a cat, uh, tent just in case. There's heaps of camping options that way. Not heaps, but there's camping options that way. And there's plenty of water too, so there's not really too much to stress about. But yeah, bring a tent. Um, and yeah, from here, we're going to be carrying on back that way down to... Yes, yeah, so we're going to be going a different way out when we came in, just to show you guys another route, probably a little bit more direct. Um, so we're going to head across to this next basin from the hut uh, to the east. And then there's a, a bit of a track that goes down into Pfeiffer Creek. And you can follow Pfeiffer Creek all the way down, uh, meets up to sort of the Taramakau River. And you can follow that out to Aiken's Corner, which will then probably cross the Aotearoa, so long as the rain's not got the river up too much, and head back up to the car. So, yeah, uh, we'll let you know how we get on, but yeah, we're about to pack it in, so we're going to get out of here. <laughs> One last quick shout out to Massive thanks to Frank Key and Honora, so I got the pronunciation, uh, Renwick. These guys have been cutting tracks in here since oh, I think about 2010. Um, mm. They did most of the maintenance on this track up to Wairoa Saddle. Um, it's not feeding tape, but it's so obvious where to go. So um, yeah, huge shout out to you guys. Cheers. Yeah, cheers guys. Appreciate it. Found the first rock in. <laughs> I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> it's pretty hard on the clear go. <laughs> See, then we need to go through like some scrub, didn't it? Yeah. So I feel like it might be a bit further around though. Yeah, Check the topo maybe. Figure out where do we go. Straight down the street here. But I did mention on remote arch to go east through the scrub a bit to avoid some scrubby bluffs, which could be on the underside of here, maybe. Alright, so when you get to this rock yarn, you're going to go east along this ridge rather than down the screw there.
It's kind of the first screw you meet eh, after you fly this ridge around mm. and this first basin out from um, the So it looks like the way down yeah. is there. <laughs> so you follow that ridge along east from where we had that other can, um, for probably a good 100 meters or so, and then it drops down. Uh, we accidentally follow that ridge further down to your scrub bash cross. Should be easier without that plague. All right, so just going to the main screen now. Um, it's pretty obvious why they don't want you going up there. It looks pretty gnarly. Um, there's a little permalot marker in there, but it's quite hard to see, so I'm just going to chuck a bit of flagging tape up here. Oh. Ride the wave! <laughs> Oh, bud. Good shit, buddy. We did it. Oh. Yes! <laughs> you suck at papers as rock, eh? Thanks, bud. I'm sure you'll get a ride on the way. Hey, see you soon. See you soon. Bye, buddy. Doing a couple of nights, just a bit of full driving, a bit of casual hunting. Yeah, midwinter to mesh, so let's get into it. Oh, we just had a big babumpha, didn't we, Benny? Yeah. So you pretty much just follow up the fuck. What's the name of the stream? That's the one thing I didn't get, isn't it? <laughs> oh well, wrap it wide off. Settle now. <laughs> We're thinking most of them might be, a bit down, uh, be down a wee bit lower, so yeah, head on out for a walk and see what we can find. <laughs> uh, really, really awesome spot too, great views. Um, didn't really, really know how to throw it to you there. <laughs> That's a shot. For fuck's sake, I just got on it too. Well, that's pretty neat actually. Well, pretty much sums up this evening. Um, bit gutted, eh? Like, this was in our heads going to be like our best chance to get off over a shammy this afternoon. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that again, eh? <laughs> I can't say it again. I think the third time you get it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much sums up her evening. <laughs>